Hi everyone, it's Monique from Butterbee Scraps and I'm back with another tutorial. This week I am really excited about the tutorial and I hope you are as well when you see it. I've decided to do a little project and we're going to do this travel wallet folio that I designed. I figured, you know, Christmas is getting close, we all want ideas for little gifts to give away and I thought this would be perfect for anyone man or woman you just change the paper um, this does not take long to make it literally took me at most an hour and a half to create the base of this folio and then I just had to add the papers and the embellishments so you can bang several of these off in one day I also designed it with in mind who may be receiving it and that person may not be a scrapbooker. So all of the tags and flaps are designed in such a way that they will fit standard 4x6 or 3x4 photos. There's no trimming required, just glue them down and it's all gonna look great. The overall measurements are 5 inches by 7 inches so it's nice and compact. You could throw it in a purse or backpack. Um, I also made the covers and the spine out of chipboard which makes it a little bit more durable if you're going to be packing it around. And then for the closure I just added this elastic closure. I just put an eyelet in the center of the spine, put an elastic through. Now this elastic is looking pretty tattered. It's from my stash and I will be replacing it with one of the Tim Holtz elastic closures. I just haven't gone any yet so I guess that's going to be one of my next purchases. On the elastic, I did put a little bronze camera charm there. You will see that I did try to keep the embellishments down to a minimum just so that the thing doesn't get too terribly thick. I do have two metal corners on the flap here and actually if you flip it over you can see I have four metal corners on the back. If I take the elastic off and flip this open, you will see on the front cover I've used a 4x6 ephemera card from the paper collection, added a couple of the chipboard elements, and I add a little bit of metal. So I've got a small metal corner here and I've got a metal embellishment underneath this little chipboard element just to offset it a little bit. The stamps are cut out from the paper collection. And then I have a border strip which is cut from the 8x8 paper collection and I just left it the full 8 inches long. I wrapped it right around the spine and onto the back. On the inside of the flap here I added a couple more little metal corners but more importantly I added this little pin holder. So this is just a piece of ivory crocheted ribbon that I put in there. I just folded it in half and glued it underneath the paper there. If you open this up you will see that there is a vertical pocket on the left. I've got a couple more metal corners there and inside the pocket are three tags. So I've got two tags. These guys measure three and a half by four and a half. So the wallpaper is three and a quarter by four and a quarter which will fit a three by four perfectly. And for the wallpaper here on the tags. I just used standard craft and cream cardstock from Michaels. I did add a little a few stamps here and there. Um, this stamp here is actually this guy here and that is by All Night Media. I did use frayed burlap ink for the stamps. Around the edges of the paper I did use the ground espresso. This tag here is good for a 4x6 so it is four and a half by six and a half inches overall and on the back I stamped this little postcard stamp. I thought this would be cute if they want a journal but it's not in the way if they just want to put a picture over top. So that's this guy here and this is by Penny Black. In the center, I love this. This is a little folder that I made it. it it's a gusseted folder. Um, on the flap here you can see I've got two more um, metal corners. One thing I do intend to do and forgot before this video was I'm going to add a couple of really small bronze seed beads on the end of the string here and tie a knot just to add a little bit of extra you know something something. On the front of the folder here I did add 
some more embellishments. I added some more of this crocheted ribbon, a couple of metal embellishments with one of the chipboard elements from the paper collection. So you open this up and you guys, I'm sorry, I have the autofocus on my camera off because it was acting funny. So I don't know if this is going to be out of focus or not, but you can see there's a gusset here and lots of room to add all sorts of receipts or postcards or whatever else you'd like to put in there. So when you flip this down, you will see a horizontal pocket. Again, I have two more metal corners here. In the pocket, I have another mat for a four by six picture. And then I've got this little journaling book. The journaling book is not standard photo size. I sized this book to suit um, just standard printer paper. So it's five and three quarters by four inches. You can just cut your paper in half and then fold it in half again, and you end up with four pages per sheet. So I use three sheets, so I've got 12 pages in this little journal, and you can see throughout that I've added a few stamps here and there just to pretty it up a little bit. So the stamps I used in this little journal book are this guy here. This is the, sorry for the glare, you guys. That's the Classics 2 by Stampers Anonymous, and then the Rockstar. And there, I did use this on one of the pages as well. So if you look at the base of this folio, don't buy, be fooled. This is not a waterfall. These are actually all tags that fold in half. So on the inside, I just used, you know, craft or cream cardstock, did a little bit of stamping, And they all come out of these little pockets. So I really do love this folio. Uh, but, you know, when you make something for the first time, there's always things that maybe you'd improve on. And that is true for this one. Um, the thing that probably bothers me the most is that actually when you've got all these tags in it, it doesn't lay flat. It kind of splays open. And I can only imagine what it's going to look like when you add pictures to it. So if you look here, you'll see there is a gusset at the bottom of this folder. But when I flip this up, it's not sitting flat. It is actually up at an angle. So I would increase the size of that gusset just so that the folder lays more flat and you've got more room for photos underneath. Um, the same is true for the spine. So um, I've got a half inch spine on here right now and I will show you guys it. I mean when you wrap this around it doesn't look too bad but you start adding photos and it's gonna look awkward. So I am gonna show you how to make this. I'm gonna get into the tutorial. The tutorial uses all the dimensions I use for this exact folio. Um, what I will do, however, is I'm going to put subtitles, tell you which uh, pieces I would alter. Um, so I would increase, I'm going to increase the spine size, which means I'll increase this size, and I'm going to increase the depth of this gusset for you. Um, something I hadn't originally intended to do, but I will do just, be, just to avoid any confusion, is I'm going to make a little cheat sheet for you. So you can actually download the cheat sheet. I'll put a link in the description box below and up there maybe um, so that you can go to the blog post and there'll be a, you can download the cheat sheet from there. It will list just a quick list of the materials you need. I'll list the dimensions of all the pieces of paper you need to make this, and I'll even put little sketches of where to score the pieces, just so that there's no confusion at all. So anyway, I'm overall really happy with how this turned out. I hope you enjoy this tutorial. I did put a lot of effort into it, so let's get to it. Okay, so what you're going to need for this folio is you're going to need one piece of 12 by 12 medium weight chipboard. 
you're going to need seven sheets of 12 by 12 cardstock uh, of the base color. You're going to want coordinating cardstock. You want journal paper, and I just used um, this just printer paper. You're going to want some pattern paper, of course. Oh, sorry about that, guys. You're going to want a small piece of ribbon to hold your pen. You're going to want some twine or book binding thread. This here is wax thread. You're going to want some sort of closure. Also going to need a bunch of tools. You're going to need your paper trimmer. Yikes. Scoreboard. Sorry, my scoreboard is hiding. Scoreboard. You're going to need a bone folder paper piercer, ruler as usual, you're going to want some decorative corner rounders. I'm using a one and a quarter and one and a half inch circle punch for the finger pull. You're going to want some double sided tape, glue, distress ink and some blending foam, scissors, and last but not least, embellishments to pretty up your folio. So let me clean this stuff up and I will come back and show you exactly how we put this thing together. Okay, I am back and I have all my papers and everything cut and we're going to start with the covers. So basically what you need to do the covers is two pieces of 5 by 7 inch chipboard and this one here is a half inch by seven inches. The black cardstock that we're going to use to cover the outside of the covers is, measures eight inches by twelve inches. So I'm going to start just by basically just finding the approximate center here half inches from the edge and I'm going to Add our little binding strip. That should be good. So it's a half inch from the end here, approximately centered in the page here. Now what I'm going to do is add these two guys on either side. And I have found a rather convenient way to space uh, my chipboard pieces when I'm doing my covers. What I do is I use my Tim Holtz ruler and I put the metal edge down and I hold it up against one piece of chipboard, slide the other one in and stick it down. Um, I don't know, I just find it really convenient to get a nice even gap. So now I'm going to roll all these, uh, the remaining cardstock over the edges of the chipboard. But first, before I do that, I like to cut an angle off here. And I usually do, the edge of my cut is approximately an eighth of an inch from the corner of the chipboard. And I do like to use a combination of glue and score tape. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is the front end here, the flap that wraps around onto the front cover. 
So you're going to need one piece of cardstock, which is four and three quarter inches by seven inches. And just let me measure to make sure I got the right piece here. Yep. And now we're gonna have to break out the scoreboard. So for this guy, we want to score th at three quarters of an inch. And then we want to score every eighth of an inch for an inch. So you're going to have a score line at three quarters of an inch and then one every eighth of an inch until you get to one and three quarter inches. Okay. And now I am actually going to fold on all of these score lines. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just working one score line at a time, folding on each of those score lines. And actually, before I attach this, I'm going to give the corners a little chomp with my envelope punch board, just because I like the look of it. And now what you can do is attach this side of that quarter inch flap right to the right hand edge of your chipboard covers. Here's a little trick. I just I just removed the one eighth of an inch strip of score tape, the backing, because this way I can kind of keep that back edge lifted up until I've got this place exactly where I want it. Press down. Now it's not going to move, and I'm not fighting with this thick piece of score tape back here. It's just something I like to do. Okay, there we go. So now we're going to work on the file folder add-on that flips down. And you're going to need three pieces of cardstock for that. The main piece of cardstock that's going to attach to your cover, um, I call this the base, is 5 inches by 10 and 3 eighths inches. Then there's the front, which is 7 and a quarter by 8 inches, and the back pocket, which is 3 and a half by 6 inches. So I'm going to start with the base. And I am going to score this guy at three quarters of an inch and then at seven eighths of an inch. I am then going to flip him this way. Okay. Don't just turn it, actually flip it over. And I'm going to score again at two and a half inches. Okay. So now what you do with this guy is you will fold this flap down. Flip it over. 
and then fold up on the remaining two score lines. And you're going to want some score tape on this flap down here. And again, before I get too carried away, I'm going to add that decorative corner using my envelope punch board here. There we go. So that's going to be the base of your file folder. Now your pocket, this is that three and a half inch by six inch piece. We're going to take that, put it in your scoreboard with the six inch side up at the top, score at five and a half inches and add half an inch. We're going to turn that 90 degrees and then score at 3 inches. Okay, so now we're going to score the front of the file folder. So you're going to put your black piece of paper in. This is the 7 and a quarter by 8 inch piece. You're going to have 7 and a quarter inches along the top. And you're going to score at 6 and 3 quarter inches. Okay. You're then going to turn it 90 degrees, so now you have the 8 inches along the top, okay? And you're going to score at 7 and a half inches, 7 inches, and 6 and a half inches on that side. And then over here you're going to score at half an inch, 1 inch, and 1 and a half inches. Or you can just flip your page and do the same on the right. <laughs> but that would just be too easy. Okay. Now with this guy, we want to cut out a corner, the bottom corner here. So you're going to cut. So this is seven and a quarter inches, and you've got your score line a half inch from the right side here. So you're going to cut up this score line for an inch and a half so until you reach that last score line at the top if that makes sense. Okay, and then you're going to cut up on this score line. So that's an inch and a half that we're cutting in. Okay, so we're going to fold this bottom flap up, and with each of these sides, we're going to fold down, up, and down. We're going to do that same on both. So down, up. And down. Okay. And you're going to want to put tape on all three of those tabs. And this is our three and a half by six inch. I'm just going to add more score tape. Fold all these tabs up. And we are ready to assemble our file folder. Okay. So you've got this guy. You've got this flap. Flip it over so your flap is down. Okay, and we're going to take this small guy. 
and you're going to remove the back of your score tape along the long edge and you're going to line it up here stick that down then you can remove the backing of your score tape on the side tabs here and stick the sucker down so now we're going to flip it over and we got the tab or the flap up at the top we're going to take this guy actually before we attach this. I want to do a finger pull. So I'm going to mark I'm just using white pencil crayon. Mark the half way mark there. And I'm going to use my one and a quarter inch punch. I'm going to line this center mark up with that white line and the two side marks up with the edge of the paper. There we go. Okay, now let's get back to this. Flaps up top, okay, you do have your tab at the bottom with the 1 8 inch spacer so what we want to do is we want to line the bottom of this pocket up with the top score line so the one that's at seven eighths of an inch there okay now what we're going to do is we're going to remove the score tape on these side pieces make sure you fold these accordion folds and then we're going to flip this up and stick it down. There we go. So now you have your little accordion folder. And this is ready to attach to our folio base. So you've got this guy on the right and you're going to take this three quarter inch tab and attach it right there. You want that score line to run right along the edge of the cover. Okay. We got the add-ons done. Now we're just going to add a piece of cardstock to the inside cover here. And I'm going to flip this upside down just so that it's easier. Okay, perfect. So that's 6 and 7 eighths by 10 and 5 eighths, guys. Now I'm just going to very carefully fold. There we go. Nice. So the next thing we're going to do, this is where we're at now. We got this flip down folder and we got the flap closure. We're going to do the easy one. We're going to do the vertical pocket on the front cover. And I'm going to turn this sideways just to make it easier. So here you're going to need a piece of cardstock three and a half by eight inches. You're going to put this in your scoreboard with eight inches along top and you're going to score at half an inch and again at seven and a half inches. I'm going to turn it 90 degrees and then score at three inches.
There we go. So now we just have the pockets in the center of the folio to work on. And to make those, you're going to need two pieces of cardstock, which are six inches wide by eight and three quarters inches tall. And we're going to score both of them the same. You can see I got six inches along the top here. So I'm going to score up five and a half inches. And again at half an inch. Oops. And I moved that piece. So I'm just going to do this. You can see I slipped, but that's okay because that's just going to be glued down. So then we turn 90 degrees and you're going to score up four inches. All right. Let's put this your scoreboard, score at five and a half, turn it 180, score at five and a half again, turn 90, and score at four inches. Okay, now you want to cut along this score line in half an inch to meet the intersecting score line. You want to do that on both pieces. Okay, you want to fold this up. And you want to fold all your tabs down. Okay. So I folded those two down, I want to fold these two down as well. So you're, when the paper's flat, you will see that they are actually folded in opposite directions. I always fold these first so I don't get confused and I know where to put my score tape. Okay, we are now ready to attach these to the inside of our folio. So I'm actually turned my folio upside down and I'm going to start with from this top edge and you're going to want to take one of these and stick the longer side down so that the top edge is seven or sorry three quarters of an inch down from the top. Okay, and I'm actually going to take my ruler and clip it in place with a binder clip. I need a bigger one. I don't know if I have a bigger one. Oh no! Okay, well, that's not going to work then. I'm just going to have to be extremely careful. I'm just going to take one side off. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get tricky here. I'm just going to pull a little bit of the backing off on the bottom because then I can move it around as much as I like. Okay, so now we can remove these two, backing off these tabs. And stick this down. Now I am going to turn this around. 
we're going to take our second piece. Of course, you want the taller, taller side up. And you're going to line this up along the bottom of your page. There we go. We are done the base of our folio. Now for the tags. So I've got four tags here that measure four and a half by seven inches and you've got to score them all in half at three and a half inches. So once these are, I've actually pre-scored all these. And these guys all go right in here in these pockets. Like so. I then have two tanks that are four and a half by six and a half inches. One of them I put in here and one of them I put in this front page. I also have two tags that are three and a quarter by, sorry, three and a half by four and a half. And I just stick those guys in there. And then of course, the little journal. So the journal measures um, four, where is it? Five and three quarter inches tall by eight inches. And then you score it down the middle at four inches and then you can put as many pieces of paper in and the paper I cut it to seven and three quarters by five and a half and score that all in half um, you may depending on how many sheets of paper you have sometimes when you stack a lot the ends don't match up perfectly so you may want to just um, you know put them in a heavy-duty paper trimmer and trim the edge so you get a nice straight edge on the end but um, anyways, this journal I put in here. To add the pen holder, I just take a piece of ribbon. Where's my ribbon? So I will take a piece of ribbon and pick the pen you want. I just cut a piece and I glue it to the page under the pattern paper. So. That's what I do there. For the closure, um, I'm actually put a, I'm going to put a eyelet right in the center of the spine here. And I want to use a Tim Holtz elastic closure, but I don't have any. So I just fancied this piece of elastic it's in horrible shape but it'll do for now and just stick it through the eyelet and then you have you know the elastic that holds everything closed so so for the mats I basically just cut the mats a quarter inch narrower um, so for the front cover for example we have five by seven I would cut it to four and three quarters by six and three quarters so I did that throughout, or I will do that throughout this entire um, folio. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you have lots of fun making these. Like I said at the beginning, these would make fantastic Christmas gifts. They're super easy, super quick to make. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching and joining me today. Hope you have a great, great, great weekend. Cheers.